So in my last video, I went over degoogling a phone. Now, I want to do a follow-up video just kind of showcasing a matrix of apps I've done uh, and also dispel some of the myths that exist in here because we're going to be talking about different stores other than the Play Store and how they interact because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about that. And then also as far as de-googling a phone, what phone can you de-google? Uh, I didn't touch on that in my past video as well. So uh, let's get into this as there's a lot to cover and I want to just jump right in. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. So let's start out with uh, the matrix of apps that we can use without Google services. Now, I've this is a running list. I'm going to continually update this on my website. If you just go to christitus.com forward slash degoogle dash apps, uh, you can actually get this entire list as I will be updating this as time goes on as I want to continue using my degoogled phone. So let's first touch on the two app stores. Um, there's a really big misconception out there. There is the Aurora store, and then there's the F-Droid store. The Aurora store basically downloads Google Play APKs, and that means a lot of the apps in there have Google services, and at, at the very least, a lot of them have like little errors. Like you can see, I put Google service errors for a warning because uh, this app uses it to put notifications on the phone and those types of things. So it interfaces with Google, even though the app works, you do have some issues with this. But I had a comment that said, hey, uh, it's just a better store. There's more apps and it's great but they didn't realize the difference between it and F-Droid. This is basically Google Store. There is a lot of trackers. Every app has a tracker on it. So uh, to emphasize this, someone pointed out Spotify has a tracker app. I'm like, yeah, it has eight. Uh, and other people were like, well, my banking app has something. And I'm like, yeah, every app from the Aurora Store has trackers on it. Uh, what trackers are in there? A lot of times you have Facebook hooks, you have... Google hooks, you have different analytics that get sent directly back to the maker of the app. There's there's a lot of different apps that go into this. So uh, every app you download from the Aurora store has trackers in it. You're giving up some of your privacy anytime you use this store. Uh, it's not 100%. Even though I've ripped out all those trackers when it comes to Facebook, Google, those types of things, uh, a lot of times those built-in analytics and reporting apps still get sent to the maker of the application. So I want to go ahead and specify that uh, because I think there was too many people thinking, oh, I'm, I'm safe. I'm installing on a de phone. I'm like, not really. I know when I use this, when you're in the Aurora store, I'll go ahead and pull up uh, the Aurora store to show you those trackers. So I'm going to go ahead and launch into my SCRP. I'm going to just go right into my phone. And by the way, this isn't an emulator. This is my actual phone back here. So uh, I think a lot of people are like, what emulator is this? It's so good. And I'm like, it's not an emulator. It's just basically screencasting using a completely open source tool. So uh, when it comes to the Aurora store, we'll go ahead and launch into it instead of f -Droid. And we're going to go ahead and pull up Spotify as that was the example someone else gave me. And we'll grab that. And then if you scroll down under trackers, it says contains trackers, eight, view. And you can see all the different trackers that actually come with that specific app. So you know what is tracking you. Like a lot of the Google stuff, those don't exist. Facebook analytics, Facebook login doesn't exist. So they're not able to actually sync into this. However, like Moat, Comstore, Adjust, a lot of these do exist and they are installed as part of the app package. That's just good to know. Uh, and I want to just pull up a couple uh, different ones just so you can understand that. Let's uh, uh, pull up a banking app. We'll use Coinbase for this one. And if you scroll down to Coinbase, it has five tracker apps. Typically, banking apps will have less trackers than, say, a free free app on the store. 
but you still see you have different apps and different trackers. They need to know if a th something crashes or, hey, if you're using your, this app this way, they need to know about it or at least uh, that. And they can also take some of your habits in the app and sell that to marketing and make even more money off of the app. A lot of times the trackers are how free apps make their money. So it just depends on the app, but every single app has it. So uh, this is actually not official canboys. Don't install a non-official banking app. <laughs> That'd be bad. Uh, but like Robinhood, there you go. There's another banking app that has it. Everything in here has trackers. I can't emphasize that enough. I just wanted to go ahead and point that out about the Aurora store. Yes, you have access to the Google store, but you should not rely wholly on this. That's why f is a much better secure and also just privacy oriented app store because it doesn't have these types of things. So let's go over to Afteroid and kind of explain those differences. Now, as far as the Afteroid apps, they are free and open source and you can do a lot of cool stuff. So if there's a good Afteroid alternative, I will use that instead of the Google app store equivalent from the Aurora store. These apps are free and open, but that also means there's a lot less polish. This is a pretty new store. It doesn't have a 10 year uh, running time or actually Android's been around a lot longer than 10 years. But I mean, you get the point. There's just not as much uh, polish to the Afteroid store. These are the apps I use out of Afteroid. I do have a couple more that I've added since this post, but I'll add those in as well and just kind of start adding all those in uh, as these are really good alternatives, if not better than the Aurora store. So I, I honestly like T-Wire, Twitter, Slide, uh, Personal DN. All these apps in here are pretty good. The only one in here that I included that I don't particularly like is OSM AND, and that's a mapping service. That's an alternative to Google Maps. It just doesn't work as well as Google Maps. And I do sacrifice a lot by using that one compared to Google Maps. So that's kind of a bummer, but the rest of them in here, honestly, I like them just as well, if not better than the Google store equivalent. All right, so here is F-Droid. As you can see, it's not well organized. It's hard to find things. I'm still trying to find the best applications in this store, but I'm gonna continually just keep going through it and curating this list and finding the ones that work the best and, and go ahead and push these in. But by all means, if you have a Afteroid equivalent, use it. But let's like say this, like well, here's a Moonlight Gaming Streaming. This is an open source project that I covered in a different video. Let's say I wanted to play some like Call of Duty on my phone. I could totally do that with Moonlight Game Streaming, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you can see all the different things that this app does. It has a really good app features. Uh, this app does promote non-free network services. They're talking about game streaming from NVIDIA, which is proprietary, but uh, this, this whole project is open source. Anywho, this, this is just kind of a basic breakdown of it. And as far as the installation process, one other thing that's a downside to this store is when you go to download something, I don't know what servers are using, but they're kind of hot garbage. Uh, they run like poo and it, it's not, doesn't have nearly the network infrastructure of like a Google store has. So it does take a little bit to install. Like this is running off a of Wi-Fi, five megs. That wasn't too bad. But when you have the bigger, bulkier apps, anticipate a long wait time when you go to install them. So uh, this is just one of them. Uh, I'll go ahead and open this up just to illustrate this app. And then there's my game stream PC. So I can actually connect to this and start streaming a game directly from my Android phone. So I, I wanted to go ahead and differentiate the two stores real fast and then also kind of showcase some of the differences between them. But there's one more thing here. You guys have probably noticed there's a couple things I, I, I forgot to put in here on the original video and it goes over me email and uh, browsability. So this is a kind of an interesting thing. Uh, obviously checking email is very, very important and something that uh, a lot of people have trouble with when going into a de-Googled environment because many people use Gmail. And this solution I'm gonna say is not ideal and it's gonna cause a lot of uproar in the comments section, but I have to tell you anyways. Microsoft Outlook is fantastic in a de-Googled phone. It has no hooks to Google Play services and it works 
Wonderful. Now, if we go back to the Aurora store, let's see what trackers are on Microsoft Outlook. This is, I can't believe I'm actually uh, recommending this, but it actually is a really good app for uh, these users. Now, obviously it's big tech all over again, but uh, yeah, it's actually a very well done app. I like it a lot better than the base Gmail app. And uh, you see the tracker count is a bit egregious because it is Microsoft after all. So this is a bit of a touch and go. This is a compromise when it comes to privacy and security. As you see, we are giving out quite a bit of stuff when it comes to this. Uh, it, there is a lot of trackers in here, but it's not nearly as tied into the Google services. And you can connect your Gmail account. You can connect your Exchange account. You can connect pretty much any account you want to it. There's not a good free alternative, hence the compromise. So I'm still able to use my D Google phone. I have no warnings. This works exactly the same as it would in a non D Google phone. And uh, it's actually a really nice app, which I hate promoting any kind of pro Microsoft product, but here we are. It is probably the best alternative from what I found. If you have a better alternative, please let me know in the comments and check the comments after this as well. Now, as far as the web browser, uh, I am using this one. It's a open source version of Firefox. So if we actually do a help and about, let's see if we can't get this. So you can see this entire thing is uh, a Mozilla phonetic is what it's called or phonetic. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as I always do, but it, it basically removes all the proprietary blobs in Firefox and you have full open source capabilities. You can get this in the Afteroid store. So Fennec is a really good one. If you're more of a Chrome based guy, I think I have Vinald on here as well. Let's see what we got. Let me close some of these apps. And if we go down here, you can see uh, Vinald is a, another one. So if you want to use this one, this isn't as open source. It does use some proprietary blobs in it. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead. This is what comes stock on Graphene OS. And uh, it's pretty darn good. So about uh, vanad vanadium, vanadium, eh, whatever. It's, it's basically just a Chrome that has some privacy and security features built in. But at the same time, it's not nearly as open source and uh, free as the Mozilla Fennec, as I found that browser to be just a little bit better. But again, if you're so used to Chromium and you want a Chromium counterpart, this would be my browser choice. Now, as far as the OS and actually getting this installed, I did get a lot of comments on my past video. Hey, can you show an installation? And it's just different for everybody. I'm using a Pixel 3, which is supported by Graphene OS. Graphene OS is mainly older Pixel phones, so mainly Pixel 3, Pixel 2. Uh, I don't know if they have support for Pixel 4 yet or not, uh, but I imagine that's coming as the Google phones and why it is kind of the choice thing for Graphene OS is you can directly interact with the bootloader. I can lock, unlock it. I can do everything. All that's required really is to have the ADB tools and that's easily done by doing the Android SDK. So if you're on Windows or Linux, you install that SDK and you can directly interact without pretty much anything going on. Just enable developer tools and ADB debugging, which I've shown in a past video, and off you go. However, when it comes to Lineage OS and the other ones that you've probably heard in comments, uh, those are a little bit more tricky because it depends on your phone. Uh, if you need to check to see if your phone's ca capable of having an unlocked bootloader, uh, definitely go to XDA Developers, look up your phone model, look into actually unlocking that bootloader. If you can unlock the bootloader, you can load images and do that just fine. You don't necessarily need to root your phone. Uh, Graphene OS was not rooted and I did not have root level access. I could still flash images to it, but I never actually rooted it uh, as that actually kind of gives access to the base level system, which would make it less secure. So rooted phones aren't necessarily a good thing. I think a lot of people uh, kind of conflate the two. So I don't really like rooted phones just because it is a security concern and it, it's something that you probably need to watch out for because you don't want an app taking over your base system. So it's not like Android and Google are completely 
evil and whatnot, when it comes to this aspect of it, there's rationales for not having a rooted cell phone. And that's important. And it's also important to disable those developer tools after you're done, because they can be used and abused by other people, uh, as it is another security concern. So after I installed this OS, I locked my bootloader and I made sure all my developer tools were turned off. If I'm leaving the house and going into an unsecure environment, which pretty much everywhere outside my house is unsecure, those tools need to be turned off because someone could connect via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or, or even take advantage of you on your computer, depending on what you have. So uh, the OS is, I, I want to cover in an installation video, but it's just such a niche topic. Uh, I would say uh, follow the install guides for your specific phone. I didn't have any trouble with the Pixel phones. I thought they were very well done, you know. Pros, you know, props to Google on that. They did a great job making an awesome open cell phone that I can modify. So that's just kind of crazy. I'm doing a de-Googled phone on YouTube. So basically telling people how not to use Google, but at the same time using Google through YouTube and a Google phone to accomplish this. Uh, I think I need to reassess my life choices. But <laughs> needless to say, it is the best solution for today, I am looking forward to the Linux phones out on the market as they are really, really promising. I do have this phone right here, which I want to go ahead and show. And this is using Ubuntu Touch as right now. It's probably one of the best ones. Here's the old Ubuntu Touch right here. Um, it's a really good phone, you know, it's, as far as, uh, what it has on it, the app store, everything, I'll do another video kind of updating you guys on the Linux phone. It's not quite ready for a daily driver. That's why I did this, uh, mainly for the security concerns with everything going on in the cell phone space right now. Um, but as soon as this becomes a daily driver, I will be using it full time. Right now, I do think it will be Ubuntu Touch from USB or UB ports uh, that actually makes this, uh, the actual OS on it. Obviously, the Pine phone is done by the Pine64 team. But I'll update you on that as soon as I have a really good update as I really want to make a video that is very useful and has a lot of value to you. But that's about all I have for today's video. I just want to update everybody on the cell phone scene, what apps I'm using. I will definitely make another video. I'm going to try and make one, like just mobile update video a week because there's so much happening in this space that I have this phone, I have uh, my Pixel phone with the Graphene OS. I'm trying to get an E Foundations phone. I think that's also called the Fair phone and uh, get another open source alternative. I also have contacted Librem to try and get a, one of the Librem 5s as soon as those launch. And if there's any other aspects of having a free and open phone that I missed here at the end, let me know down in the comment section as I'm really obsessed with having a cell phone that is functional, but also uh, respects some security and privacy. Obviously, it's not a perfect solution right now, but I'm really trying to get that solution to a point to where anybody can do it. And I think we're really getting close. This year is probably the most excited I've been about a cell phone in the past decade. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts and a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.